everyone, and welcome to Blue Ribbon. I'm Sandra Pinckney, and it's time to stand up and holler for the best cheerleaders in the South. We've traveled to four Southeastern universities in search of the loudest, the most athletic, and the most competitive cheerleaders we could find. These days, there's a lot more to cheerleading than short skirts and pom-poms. Our first stop, Starkville, home of the Bulldogs. Mississippi State University. MSU fans love their Bulldogs and their cheerleaders. This squad really knows how to pump up the faithful followers of the maroon and white. The cheerleaders are the most visible athletes on campus. They're in front of the crowd, basically sitting there the whole time, and they are seen by every, even more people than most of the players. We go in five, Daryl Lyons is the head coach of the Mississippi State cheerleaders. He also oversees the Palm Squads and the team mascots, Bully and Bell. Needless to say, Coach Lyons is always busy, and so are his cheerleaders. Hectic. From 8 in the morning till 10 at night, I'm going, going, going. But, I mean, it's all about time management. I think uh, a lot of people perhaps think of cheerleading as just being out there in a short skirt, yelling for the boys, uh, but it's not like that at all because we work hard. And um, it's just, it's not about being seen, it's about, you know, doing our part to get everybody involved, getting everybody excited about state. If you don't believe cheerleading is hard work, just try keeping up with this bunch during a home football weekend. They start on Friday by going where the fans are, and what better place to find them than inside, that's right, inside the Starkville Walmart. community who's not able to go to the games sometimes and actually come out the children very active with it a lot of photographs with bully and uh, bell and the cheerleaders uh, the kids just really enjoy it family time this is our second year of doing this and it get, keeps getting bigger and bigger each time well there's no doubt they are the best cheerleading squad in the southeastern conference no doubt the next day is game day and for daryl's squad preparations start early Big game, you guys. It's the last home game, so finish strong. Go. They better be ready. From here, the squad embarks on six hours of non-stop tumbling, tossing, and yelling for the Bulldogs. It starts with a traditional Saturday morning pep rally called Fanfare. Well, our band comes, and we do a pet rally, and then we move over, and Coach Kroon and the football players come, they're dressed in suits, and they walk through all the fans and the cheerleaders in the band. Next, the team takes the long walk over to the stadium to stretch and warm up their stunts. Then it's time to lead a few more cheers. This time for some of the thousands of tailgaters spread out all over the campus. These South's famous for ribs, and so we just decided we'd bring some up one weekend, and it's got to be a tradition, so we, we try to do this at every home game now. Mr. Beatty brings a whole lot of ribs these days. Since his daughter joined the cheerleading squad, she's been bringing about 40 of her closest friends over for lunch. It's the fun part, being out here to eat. After a quick fight, the team is off to another performance at the club level. These are the luxury suites reserved for the university's major contributors. Finally, it's game time. And there's nothing like just being out there and having all the fans cheering with you and, and just getting everybody excited. During the game, Daryl keeps one eye on the field and one eye on his team so they can react to any situation. And when the Bulldogs score, everybody knows what to do. The crowd loves the elaborate pyramids and stunts the cheerleaders perform, skills they develop by competing themselves. The school trophy case is filled with blue ribbons the team has won at national cheerleading competitions. As we compete at UCA Nationals, we've just qualified uh, in the Division 1A and 
and it's very tough in our region because we're in there with the SEC, all the other major SEC schools, Kentucky, uh, LSU, Tennessee, and Alabama. The NCAA doesn't sanction competitive cheerleading, and most schools don't recognize it as an official sport. But don't tell that to these young athletes. If you're around friends that don't know a lot about it, they're kind of like, well, that's kind of girly or, you know, something to that effect. But if you, if they see what you do every day, they, they realize, man, that's, that's hard work. Uh, we've been practicing lately, like, th three times a week, up to two, three hours each time. And now we're, since we're getting ready for nationals, we've been practicing a little bit more. Eight, squeeze one. Squeeze, save it, good. Move, one. Three-hour practices, workouts, a nearly non-stop schedule. It makes you wonder, why do they do it? The best part to me is the camaraderie, just being around each other and being a team. I love doing it, and I love my school. And when you're in front of the band, it just gets your going, going, it, you can't beat it. Six, seven, eight, one. Success as a cheerleader comes from working hard and working together. And whether they're on the sidelines rooting for the dogs or competing in their own right, this blue ribbon team is determined to stay on top.